Hey, what's going on? Azura here. Today we're going to explore the American LBT and the Japanese Type 2 Kami tank in depth. Talking about their specializations, main armament stats, armor stats, and my thoughts on different ways that these two amphibious tanks can be used to their maximum effectiveness. The LVT and the Type 2 Kami came with the Pacific Theater and are available only on those maps at this time. Both are unique in the way that they are both amphibious tanks and you are able to go into water. These two are also very similar in many ways so I will go through both of them together in this video. And their uniqueness does not stop there. Instead of the three main specialization path you can go through with the Sherman and the Type 97 Chiha, these tanks have four ways to specialize in. These will be the Howitzer variants, the 37mm HG and AP Specialized Rounds variants, the larger 75mm cannon variants, and the dual heavy machine gun variants. And just like my previous videos in this series, I will talk about how each of these main cannons perform before getting into these builds and my impression on them. I am going to talk about the tank shells first, then I will talk about the heavy machine gun version separately. Let's begin with velocity. The smaller 37mm AT round has the highest velocity at 700 meters per second. That's more than 30% faster than the next fastest shell in all the Pacific tanks which is ideal for long range tank sniping. Then their HE version also has a very good velocity of just past 500 meters per second. Then the bigger 75mm shell have a slower velocity of 390 meters per second and the howitzer rounds have a much lower velocity of just around 100 meters per second which is roughly the same as all the other howitzer type rounds. Now moving on to damage, I am not going to explain further in detail regarding what the impact and blast damages are. If you are not familiar, please watch part 1 and part 2 of this series. So looking at the graph here, we can see that the AT rounds have a respectable impact damage making it an ideal choice for hitting armor, especially if you pair that with a really flat trajectory and a high velocity. You can be quite accurate with hitting the exact spot you are aiming for. The next up will be the 75mm HE rounds. These are almost identical to the 57mm default round on the Type 97 Shiha. Then we have the 120mm Howitzer, which is a few percentile worse than the 120mm on the Chiha in terms of raw damage. The default 37mm HE round then follow with a mediocre damage to armor as well as a maximum of 100 blast damage rather than 112 blast damage like most of the other HE rounds. This will come into play a bit later when I talk about the blast radius. And last will be the LVT 75mm howitzer round. It is considerably weaker to enemy tanks in terms of damage, but they make it up in other areas. Now let's talk about the blast radius. If you want more in-depth explanation of these different terms, also refer back to part 1 and part 2. Also note the roughly to scale soldier here so you can get an idea of how big the blast area is. So the Kami's howitzer once again reigns supreme in this category, having a 3.6 meter one hit kill zone. Following that is the LVT's Howitzer which has a 2.4 meters kill zone which is still quite good even being the worst among all Howitzer shells. Then the 75mm HE are pretty much just your run of the mill HE round in terms of blast radius. And the smaller 37mm have an even smaller blast radius of just over 1 meter. Especially for the Kami you pretty much have to hit right next to them in order to get a kill. Then the AT rounds are once again incapable of one hit kills unless you hit them directly. So no one hit kill radius bar available for those. Then to round things up here, let's talk about the rate of fire. The smaller 37mm cannons actually have a very fast rate of fire of 25 rounds per minute which can get an additional 10% increase through specializations. The 75mm cannon have a 20 rounds per minute rate of fire just like most of the other tank guns on the Sherman and the Chiha. And then we have the LVT's howitzer round at 18 rounds per minute which can also be upgraded. And this is a saving grace for its relatively poor damage performance. And just to give you the context, the Kami's 120mm and the British Churchill Mark 7 have a 10 rounds per minute rate of fire. And the Chiha with 11 rounds per minute and the Sherman with 12 rounds per minute. That's a massive advantage. But which one would you prefer will highly depend on how you play, how accurate you are, or whether all you care about is the occasional massive kill feed from one shell. Or do you prefer a more forgiving rate of fire with the trade-off of losing roughly one third of the blast radius? But that may be a moot point because of what I am going to introduce to you in just a second. Alright, so we're done with big tank shells. Now let's move on to heavy machine gun specializations that are unique to these two tanks. 
These act more like small arms with a drop off value depending on the distance. The AA guns can damage planes and infantry, but it's not capable of damaging tanks. The AT rounds can damage all targets. And the AA rounds have a drop off from 58 damage up to 15 meters to 34 up to 75 meters. That means it can 2 hit kill an enemy up to around 35 meters or so, and then 3 hit kills at any distance after that. All of that's firing at 600 rounds per minute with a 900 meters per second velocity. It can also kill planes in one burst before you overheat. Then you have the AT rounds which shoot a lot slower at 400 rounds per minute at a lower velocity at 400 meters per second. The damage drop off is also lower against infantry, taking up to 4 bullets to kill at further distances. It also deals moderate amount of damage to tanks. Because nobody other than DICE coders know how exactly all variables work in terms of spitting out the actual damage, I am not able to tell you how exactly these compare to actual tank shells in terms of how fast they kill. What I can show you are some footage of how much damage it deals shooting at different parts of the tank. If you aim at the front, side or turret of the tanks, it is really quite weak and can take up to 5 or 6 or even more bursts to kill a tank, especially if they are far away. But if you are able to sneak behind them, you can do some ridiculous damage for what it is. Here you can see me dishing out roughly maybe half to two thirds of the damage per second compared to bigger cannons on the Sherman tank when I was aiming at the turrets. But if you are able to catch them by surprise, you can deal some massive damage. Here you can see me doing 75 damage in one burst. And that's insane. Anyway, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here. Let's get back to the armor of the LVT and the Kami. They are both identical so we can talk as if they are the same. So let's first explore the weak points of the tanks. So unlike the bigger tanks like the Sherman and the Chiha with a higher multiplier of its rear and then lower on the side and then the front and then the turrets, these tanks actually have the same maximum multiplier of 1.67 times for the rear, the side and the turrets with a much worse multiplier for the front. And remember that for all surfaces of the tanks other than the turrets, Impact of angle matters for impact damage and these multipliers. That means unless you can get an almost perfect perpendicular shot with a 5 degree margin, you're better off aiming at the turret for maximum damage. But that's not to say that you shouldn't consider hitting other parts. Remember disabling tracks and engines can still be very important in these situations. On the right here, you can see the frontal view of the LVTs on top and the Kami on the bottom. Because the front armor has such poor multipliers, you are far better off hitting the tracks directly to aim at a decent multiplier as well as to disable the tracks. And it's quite important especially for the Kami because of its high mobility. You want to do all you can to prevent it from escaping. But if hitting the tracks is a bit more difficult, hitting its turrets would be your next best option. I don't want to say that you should never hit the front, especially if both tanks are moving fast and you're not confident in hitting those parts, you are most likely better off just taking the shot at the biggest area because a poor hit is better than a complete miss. Then moving on to defensive angle, and despite the significant difference of armor values of the Sherman and the Chiha compared to these tanks, this is actually not that different. The best angle to minimize your incoming damage is to angle your tank 42 degrees or if you can look at your HUD just a tad bit past the midline of the diagonal lines. These will cause your incoming rounds to deal only 0.6 times impact damage, which is particularly useful against AP rounds. Alright, now we're done with these graphs and numbers, we can talk a bit about my impression of these different builds I have tried. There are basically 4 different major paths you can take, and there are minor variants you can choose between depending on your playstyle and preferences. The first would be the default 37mm cannon with the AT shell build. This build gives a decently effective anti-tank option with the AT shells and the rapid fire main gun to deal with scattered infantry. You do need to be quite accurate with your shots to get a one hit kill. Overall this is somewhat mediocre in performance, with a lower anti-tank capability compared to your solely land based tanks and a similar anti-infantry performance. Unless you like to be able to flank using open water as flank routes for a worse damage performance, then this may not be your best bet and you are better off using a Sherman or the Chiha. Then the next would be the 75mm build. For that particular build, it would perform similarly to a stock Chiha tank without the AT rounds. It also has a much lower rate of fire compared to the stock cannon, and a slightly larger blast radius compared to the 37mm counterparts. This build is quite lackluster in my opinion and may be worse than the 37mm build. The third would be to use the howitzer upgrade. This is the one that are a bit more different between the two tanks. 
the LVT will be able to do more rapid fire smaller shells rather than using one of the biggest shells in the game for the Kami with a much lower rate of fire. The Kami Howitzer build also comes with a coaxial flamethrower so if you like to use that, that's an option you can go for. If you take the left side tree here, you do lose the engine upgrade that gives the Kami a unique edge on high top speed zooming around on the map and doing some epic plans crossing islands through the oceans. And just a side note here is that if you do use a flamethrower as coaxial, you can use it to damage even enemy tanks between your shots. But the objective to use the Howitzer Cannon is to deal massive damage to the enemy infantry. And although this option is not a bad one, there is another one that stands above the rest by a large margin. This build brings out the full potential of the tank and specializes in one thing and one thing only. It would be the HMG build. MG42s can step aside when you bring this bad boy to the fight. I think it is actually way too powerful and deserves a nerf. It can beam infantry across the map, shred half the team in seconds. Here you can see the infantry has no chance to react and basically dead the moment I look at them. It can also wreck planes like a walk in the park if they fly close by. But it is by no means as effective as stationary AAs for longer distances, since it has no proximity fuse and it is just bullets flying in the air. And to top it off, it gets AT rounds that can wreck tanks in the rear. Given it is still quite situational, it still deserves some credit in that regard. Currently, this is by far the best specialized build of the amphibious tanks, especially that of the Type 2 Kami that allows you to zoom in and out, flank an enemy team, clean out the entire objective without anyone knowing how, and then zoom away. It is an assassin in a tank form, and if you are able to sneak up on enemy tanks, then you can take them on as well. The only downside of this tank is the slightly weaker armor compared to the land-based tanks and its inability to win head-on fights. Otherwise, I can easily say that this build makes these tanks god tier in terms of raw infantry killing ability and its ease of use. I do suspect that DICE may make some adjustments after the initial testing period so the future of this build may not be established. But for now, that's it. What do you think about these amphibious tanks? Let me know down in the comment section. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If not, a thumbs down. Feel free to follow me on Twitter and join my Discord channel. Links are down below. I would also appreciate it immensely if you decide to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notification. Otherwise, have a tank day and I will see you again soon.